I wrote some code to let the model behind ChatGPT play Super Mario 64. It's often said that these models are uh, predictors, not actors, but I thought I would give it a try and see if the results speak for themselves. These models such as GPT-4 have a bit of latency and I found that as the primary issue um, in most cases about how it navigated and made decisions. It would be interesting if latency was non-existent, how this model would, could do if it could get more frames per second. So I'll let you see the results and you could make your own decision about how it does. Before we get into the game progress and how GPT-4 did, I thought I would talk a little bit about the code. So I created a repository called Multimodal Gamer and um, it's basically a framework to enable multimodal models to play games on a computer. Um, it's basically a fork of something else I was working on called self-operating computer. And self-operating computer, basically it, what it does is it has cycles where it takes a screenshot, sends it to the model, the model decides what to do, and then it takes a screenshot and so on and so forth. Um, and so it just each step, it's seeing the screen and making a decision, kind of like we do. Um, and so forked that to see if we could do that with gaming. And so I had to change the controllers and I'm gonna talk a lot about the code at the end of the video, but I figured I would just briefly mention this repository if you're interested. And if you're interested in more about how the code works, I'll mention that more later. Um, and then the other thing I wanna say is uh, please forgive me for the audio differences. I'm still learning um, how to get the audio just right. So some of these videos uh, that are coming up, the audio changes a little bit. Um, all right, let's get started. Okay, I have an initial implementation, so I'm going to try it now. Okay, so it took a screenshot. So, let's see if it... Okay, so it moved forward. Moved up. And it said Mario is facing the path forward. Let's start moving up the path. Moving, Continue moving up the path. Yeah, so just an initial proof of concept. Let's make it better. Okay, I have the next iteration. And let's see if Mario can cross the bridge. Okay, I'm gonna start up Mario. Okay, my hands are off. So now it can, GPT-4 Vision can decide on the amount of time to hold it. Oh, okay, he made it across the bridge. So Mario needs to go towards the bridge, continue his adventure, adventure hold up for three seconds is what it did. Now it's jumping. Uh, Mario is facing a possible injury. Should jump over it. Well, that's wrong. Okay. Moving up. <laughs> okay. All right. The duration is helpful, but three seconds is probably too long since how infrequent the screenshots are. Okay. I'm going to try to iterate it. So I made some adjustments in the prompt so that GP4 can make multiple actions at a time and it's a little more logical on the duration of time it takes an action. So let's see how Mario does passing this guy. Okay, I'm gonna start it up. Okay, so it probably took the screenshot. Okay, Mario's over there, kind of in that corner. Okay, he's running around, oh, oh he's not doing very well. Uh, okay, he got hurt. Hopefully he goes facing, turn around towards the star. Okay, he's running away. Retreat further, possibly circle around it. Okay, so now he's running. So head towards the star behind the gate, which involves freeing train shop or finding another way to access. I'll close the gate now. I should approach the wooden post and attempt to free train shop. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how, what that is. She grabbed the re. Okay, it seems like it, it, GPT-4 was on to something there. 
need to reposition Mario to grab. Oh, ran into Train Chomp. Need to coin quickly to recover. Yeah, Mario's struggling. Okay, let's keep adjusting and iterating it. So I adjusted the prompt for GPT-4 to give it more context about the controllers it has and the ones it doesn't have, like it can't toggle the view. Um, it might have helped, so let's see how... Uh, how Mario does now. Okay. You can get past these things. Okay, so he's running. He stopped. He's at the top of the hill. Okay, he's running, he's running. Oh, he's in the middle. Wow, okay, that was pretty good actually. Oh, he's running to the left. Oh, he got hit. Okay, he's passed him. Oh, it, it finished him. Okay, he was close. So now that you've seen each iteration uh, of the project as I've adjusted it, I thought I would just share a longer, fast-forwarded version of the final iteration I worked on. I still think there's a lot more that can be improved, but it's kind of fun to see how it would do, um, not just in snippets, but um, over a longer period of time. So. Here's the fast forward version of it navigating. Let's look at the code. So it's just a few files in this repository. It's uh, relatively small. And let's start with the prompt. So the prompt that we're sending to GPT-4 Vision Preview is pretty simple. It's, we're just saying, you know, you're playing the game. And um, I set up this prompt so we, it could be used with other games, but basically the game is Super Mario 64. And then it has a goal to collect power stars scattered across the various levels in the game. Um, and uh, which access through the paintings in Prince, uh, Princess Peach's castle. Um, and then it has a controller, uh, the N64 controller, just to give it some contacts. And I pass those into this long prompt string, and we just say, here are your actions, up, down, left, right, attack, jump. Um, and we just give it some context. We let it do actions for a duration. It can hold the controls for a duration. And we are using just valid JSON. We're asking it to return valid JSON. And here we give it some examples. We're saying, you know, you can do an uh, up action and for a duration. And we give it some context and we give it some important things to think about, such as um, don't leave out a thought um, and some context about what it's seeing. It's seeing a snapshot of the screen at every iteration. So, yeah, I mean, that's really the system problem, pretty basic. Um, and where we send that system prompt is in the API file. So we take a screenshot and uh, we just save that to the, uh, locally to the computer. And then we pass up that screenshot as a base 64 to the um, OpenAI API. Um, and we send it with a user prompt, which says, uh, see the screenshot uh, of the game to, and you know do your next action basically here is what we're saying. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's like, there's a, there's a lot of other pieces, but um, that's really like the important part is the prompt and, and the screenshot and sending it to GPT-4, um, in which we get a response, we clean the response, and we build the messages array, which you can learn more about in the, the docs. Um, the only other parts I'll show are like, so where do we call this API? Um, we just do it in the main file. We get a system prompt, which I just showed you. That's the system prompt. We build the messages. And then we start a loop. This is really common when you um, are using like GPT-4, when you hear about agents, um, a lot of times there's just a loop running 
and it has some objective and at each each iteration of the loop um, it it does another action and so that's what we have here we just have a while true loop and we only let it act 20 times we have a max on our loop and it gets the operation from the prompt we saw earlier and then we pull out these the actions the thoughts and then this is like the adapter so we to keep the prompt simple i said it can i told a gpt4 vision that it can go up down left right attack but then we have to convert that to the keys of the keyboard so we do that here um which uh in the game system online uh on the on the web uh super mario 64 that i found the the keys are w is up and d is right so just do a conversion and then we uh, basically appending these keys to an array and then we're sending it to the operating operating system dot press so what is that let's go look at that built a very simple class in Python and a function called press which just uses this library pi auto uh, GUI and this library lets you just uh, uh, fire keyboard events or mouse events the same as we do when we use a computer and that's really the code um, I'll, I'll leave the, it there with the code, but I will um, basically say like this, I hope this repo can be adjusted by others and, and you can make it play other games. I think the greatest potential for this repo is games where latency is not a problem, where um, there may be step, you take the, the game is step by step and it's okay if you take a while at each step. So um, I hope that others try to modify this repo and try to build other games. I might do so myself um, and, and if I do I will uh, share more uh, YouTubes of it. So that was my review of getting GPT-4 to play Super Mario. There were definitely issues. It struggled in many instances. Mar um, Super Mario is definitely latency sensitive where if you are just acting every 10 seconds and just doing like one move, it just, it, it definitely struggles. So I, but I still ask that question. I wonder how this would do if, if these models had zero latency and they could get many frames per second. Um, yeah, I'll let you form your opinion on whether multimodal models and LLMs are any good at actions or acting and not just predicting. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, please subscribe if you find this interesting and I'll try to do more like it. If you want me to dive into the, the kind of the origin project, self-operating computer, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy, be happy to do a YouTube of that as well.